Hey there YouTubers, want to do a quick little video. I just kicked on my furnace just to give it a monthly run and it's working fine. You can feel the heat coming out. Um, I got some feedback from somebody that says you shouldn't be making RV videos because you don't live full time in an RV like I'm trying to pretend. I think if you've watched many of my videos, I'm quite open and honest in the front that I don't do full time RVing yet. I'm happy with how my life is going and I'm going to get to full time and but no, I do not full time today. Um, this video is in response to, it's kind of a rebuttal. Yeah, it's kind of a rebuttal to Nomadic Fanatic. Eric, you made a video about comparing Class B's to Class C's and, and A's and stuff like that. So, this is all in good fun. But... I agree with pretty much everything you said, the downsides of Class B's, but there are upsides too, and I wanted to share both some upsides and some downsides. Um, first upside, when I was going to buy an RV, I was all my plans were to get a Class C. Um, then it came down to mileage, because my hopes are to see as many things as I can. It means a lot of gas, means a lot of money, and when I did the figuring for a Class C, it just it didn't work for my budget. So I started looking in the Class B's, and this one, I consistently get at least 16 miles of the gallon. That's a big difference than what you're going to get in most Class C's. So that, that goes back to, again, you have to find out what you want, what works for you, and then find the thing that best fits your needs. And with anything you pick, there are going to be trade-offs. The good side of a Class B, this is 22 feet long. I can go anywhere I want to. I can park anywhere a car can park. Um, it's easy to drive. It's nine feet tall, so sometimes you catch a little wind, but really it's not much di more difficult than driving a car. It's pretty it's pretty straightforward. I also, I don't need a toad. Sometimes it's cool to have a car, but I can unplug this and be set to get on the road in less than five minutes from anywhere. And pretty much other than going through a drive through I can take this anywhere I want to, which really does make life pretty simple. And since I don't need a toad, that saves me money. I don't have to have car insurance for another vehicle. I don't have to fight towing it, getting in and out of places that can be difficult or pain. Um, I don't have the maintenance on a, on a second vehicle. I don't have to buy tires for another vehicle. I, I don't have to deal with all those things because this one thing handles all my stuff. Now for me, what was important was a bed. And I do see a lot of Class B's that have like a fold-down couch bench thing that people are sleeping on. I couldn't do that. That wasn't going to work for me. So when I got this RV, it had two twin beds. The previous owner had taken out the fold-down sofa and put two twin beds in. That didn't really work for me either. So I have a cousin that works hotels. I got a hotel-grade, excellent, double-sided mattress, queen-size bed in the back of my RV. That was that was a priority for me. When you're traveling, I think you need to be able to sleep comfortable. And I don't want to sleep on an air mattress. I don't want to sleep on the on a two inch piece of foam on the bottom of a floor. You know, on the floor of a of a cargo van. That wasn't for me. Other people, cool, but for me, that wasn't going to work. Again, it goes back to you always have to figure out what's important to you and then find the things that fit your needs. It is small. You can get claustrophobic. I find myself next to the bed. I've, I've sort of set up a seat there and a TV that goes there. I also have a t smaller TV up front that has an antenna. But normally I watch DVDs if, I, if I'm in here because it's raining or because it got late. Because I like to spend my time outside. But you can get claustrophobic. I have that little area, but I do try to spend as much time outside. Which, in a sense, is almost a benefit because... Being so tight and feeling confined makes you go outside. And to me, that's why I'm doing this, to go outside. And I have everything that a Class C or Class A has. I have a generator, which is a big important factor. I'll get to generator again. But I have a small refrigerator. I have a restroom. I have a shower. This is shower curtain rod. I made a video in the past that I have showered in here. Um, those facilities aren't super important to me. Because as much as I can, I'm going to use, you know, campground showers, gyms, um, wherever I can. 
other than showering in my RV. And not just because it's a Class B, but a lot of regular RVs, I, I don't think it's fun to shower in them. And you got to deal with all the getting rid of your wastewater and all that good stuff. But I have a two burner stove, most have. I have a small refrigerator, I have a microwave, I have a coffee pot. Um, because I don't have an oven, I have a little new wave oven. Works fantastic, probably better than a propane oven. So that's solved. Um, when I can, I do as much as I can outside. If I have electricity, I have outside um, appliances I can cook on. And I also have a small portable grill that I can cook, cook on. The resale value on a Class B is far superior to any other RV you're going to buy. Um, I got a great deal on this, and I am more than confident that I could resell it for at least what I paid for, and probably a little bit more. So the resale value on Class Bs is, is, is another good thing. Um, I don't know if I said before because I messed up my camera and I'm doing this a second time, but... This is a Dodge chassis. This is a 1999 Leisure Travel. It's a Dodge. Under the hood, you pop the hood up, it's a Dodge. So if I'm out somewhere and I have problems that I can't fix, any Dodge dealership can work on my RV. And you can't always find that same thing with the larger RVs. I do have a generator, and I would not own an RV if I didn't. And the generator has an extra benefit. As I showed you, I just turned the furnace on to give it a good run. My generator, in an RV this small, my generator easily powers my air conditioner and it cools it off much quicker. A space this small is much easier to keep warm and to keep cool. Um, I went camping when it was 10 below at night and this little space heater was all I needed to heat up my RV. That's not gonna happen in a bigger RV. And I was paying for electricity, so why burn my propane? This little sucker kept this nice and warm. And when I went out for hikes, my AC unit also has a heat pump on it. So when I left the cat in here while I was out, the heater on there was up, and we were good to go. So that is a benefit. Small space, heats easy, cools easy. You'll find with many RVs, you know, the bigger RVs, you, it takes more work to drive them, to park them, to do everything, to find spaces that you fit, to include many state and national parks. There's a lot of them, the bigger ones just don't fit. This Class B gun go anywhere. I'm never gonna have a problem finding a space big enough for this. A lot of times Class C's and Class A's, one of your biggest problems with those is water damage. They leak, the roofs often leak. There's a fiberglass shell to this roof, it's not gonna leak. Well, anything is possible, but the chances of these leaking is far lower and everybody knows the worst problem for an RV is water. So that's a benefit. So the small space, although oftentimes confining, has the benefit of making you go outside. A small refrigerator has the benefit of making you eat more fresh foods. If you stop yourself from doing a lot of canned food, which can be a problem for any RVer. But there are also downsides. I will easily admit there's downsides. As I said before, there's downsides to everything in life. Any kind of RV you want, there's going to be a trade-off for it. That's why you got to find the one that works for you. Some of the some of the bad parts of a Class B RV is they're small. I'm standing at the bed. One, two, three, four, five steps. I can take. I have five steps of livable space. I've done some other videos that give all the dimensions. And maybe I'll put a link in there, but it's small. It's very small. This is only going to work for two people. And two people that like each other. Two people that can really get along. Because although, you know, this, the front seats swivel around and there's tables you can put in multiple locations. It's a small space. You have to get along and you have to know each other well enough to know... No sense of me getting pissed off. Let me go find my own little space outside that door. You'll see some videos where people are like, Yeah, my small Class B, we had six people in here. We were having a great party. It was wonderful. They're full of shit. You're not going to get six people in here and they're gonna, not going to be happy. 
<laughs> if you want to have a party with six people, hopefully you got a picnic table or something outside where you can relax. Because you don't need six people in here. If you're much more, like I'm 5'10", so I clear here because I have the, the floor, the different layers to my floor, and I'm at the lower level. So if you're 6'3", I've done all the measurements again. If you're 6'3", Class B is going to be very tough for you. If you're older and you have a hard time bending, Class Bs, you have to bend down to get in and out the door. Most Class As and Cs, you don't have to do that. You can walk in, so you have to be ready for that. Storage, storage, storage. That's the part that everybody has a problem with. Again, this is a 99 Leisure Travel, and one of my favorite things about this is the storage. I have over five feet on each side, and you have to be organized. You have to... Sorry, the battery died. If I'm refocused, I had a couple different problems, so this might be pieced together. I have all kinds of storage room under the bed. I get lots of junk under there. Um, I have a huge, what I guess you would call basement in larger RVs, but three feet in and the whole sides of the RV is, is, a, is a trunk that I can get all kinds of stuff in. In there I keep a 12 by 12 screened room so if I need to be outside and relaxing and I'm swarmed by black flies or something like that I can be out there and hang with the cat wherever the hell the cat went. Oh there's Keek. See she's not as big a dude as Jack so I can get it by with a smaller RV. Right Keek? I think every one of my videos says RVing whatever way you do it is perfect for you. Just find the way that works. So it's not a one size fits all world. It's nine feet tall. So it does look like an RV like you mentioned in that. I don't think you're fooling anybody when you're in a class B motorhome that it's an RV. Not at all. Stealth camping is not the highest on my priority. So I don't worry about that aspect too much tires. Most Class C's and Class A's have more than four tires. You have to pay for those. Silly, but I saved two tires. One of the problems with a Class B is they can be very difficult to level. You have to find a pretty level starting place to park your Class B. Um, you need that for the refrigerator, obviously. I carry some Lynx levelers. They're only going to do so much. You know, the larger Class C's and Class A's have leveling systems that, that work awesome to get you perfectly level. Class B, you don't really have that. So in closing, Eric, I agreed with pretty much everything you said, but that doesn't mean that there aren't good sides to a Class B, which, which you conceded. I mean, you knew that. Uh, you've done both. You prefer yours. I've only done this so far. I know there are times that the small space drives me nuts. I find it easy two, three days in one location, I'm good, then after that, need to be moving. This is, to me, a Class B is not something you're going to go boondocking for three months in one spot and live there, you know, or stay in a campground forever and this is my RV. You're not going to have a lot of space if you need inside space. I like being outside, so that doesn't cause me too much concern. Everything has pluses and minuses. If you're thinking about getting one, research, 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 and see as many as you can to get a feel for what they really are. Take the advice of everybody else with a grain of salt. You might watch, you might have been in a Class B and hate it. Or you might have been in a Class B and just thought it was awesome. It's just finding what works for you. Finding the right thing for you. That's all I have to say. Hopefully I can turn this into something. Well, I have one other thing to say. Have a great and wonderful day.